Hi, and uh, thank for the hand up. Um, I'm Anais Brett, and I did my PhD between uh, Luleå University and the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland, and worked on, the, uh, on integrating uh, geological and geophysical data for mineral exploration in Greenland. So I uh, worked on the Jemson Land Basin, which is located in central East Greenland, and which is a sedimentary basin where occur numerous uh, mineral occurrences through the entire sedimentary sequence. So <clears throat> to explore uh, for minerals with uh, geophysical data, there are two approaches. Uh, direct uh, targeting, where we would look for uh, geophysical uh, anomalies associated with the ore deposit. Uh, but for that, we need the mineralization to have uh, uh, physical properties that would contrast with the host rocks, such as uh, density, magnetization, or electrical properties. The second approach is indirect targeting, that is looking for proxies, and interpret the geophysical data uh, to identify areas that have geological settings that are favorable for mineralization. But then we need to know uh, how, uh, what these uh, good geological settings would be. <clears throat> and to form all deposits, uh, we need several ingredients. Uh, we need an energy and heat source for fluid circulation. We need a fluid and uh, source, uh, so in this uh, context that can be um, uh, basinal brines, and metal source, so here we have oxidized sediments or volcanic rocks. Uh, we need uh, fluid pathways to mobilize these uh, uh, mineralizing fluids across the basin before they get uh, trapped uh, in the basin. Uh, and uh, uh, so that the minerals, uh, the metals precipitate. Uh, and we also observe uh, alteration uh, from residual fluid discharge. So <coughs> uh, in my thesis, I worked on different of those aspects uh, and tried to find this with, uh, use that with geophysical data. So I first studied the geometry of the basin and tried to estimate the sedimentary thickness. Uh, for that, I integrated different kinds of geophysical and geological data uh, to build a 3D, structural, uh, 3D geological model, and then modeled magnetic data to try and estimate the sedimentary thickness between the, uh, in the different blocks. So that allowed to identify uh, areas with a thick sedimentary package uh, that are filled in with oxidized sediments that can provide, uh, uh, that is a good sources for metals. Then I tried to identify structures and pathways for the mineralizing fluids. Um, <clears throat> and in this area, many uh, mineral occurrences are structurally controlled or intrusion related. And faults and intrusions uh, often result in a, a gain or loss of uh, magnetic minerals where they occur. And therefore, they contrast with the surrounding host rocks, so we can map them from magnetic data. So I try to <coughs> first uh, enhance the magnetic signature of those ge geophysical uh, features, geological features, then map uh, the magnetic anomalies uh, and correlate them with geological features, and then try to relate those magnetic structures to uh, known mineral systems in the area. And that allowed to identify different uh, prospective areas for structurally controlled mineralization. And finally, I tried to uh, map alteration and mineralization in the area. And for this, I use electromagnetic data that are usually uh, so used to produce electrical uh, conductivity or resistivity uh, models of the subsurface. Uh, and <coughs> for each measurement uh, location in the area where we have the data, we have a voltage a decay across time. And in this data, we observed a lot of uh, negative voltages, which can be explained by induced polarization effects. And those, they reflect chargeability uh, of the ground and can be possibly associated with uh, metal grains or with uh, clay minerals that can result from hydrothermal alteration. So they are good proxies for uh, mineral tar targeting. So <coughs> try to map this uh, IP effect by analyzing the voltage decay using self-organizing maps. 
um, and then classify and specially correlate those uh, strong IP effects. And we could identify four areas with strong IP effects, some of which are uh, associated with clay-altered uh, outcrops, where we also have uh, uh, sulfide minerals. So, <coughs> to conclude, uh, direct targeting uh, with geophysical data may be uh, limited sometimes, but uh, indirect targeting can still be uh, useful to help focusing mineral exploration in the uh, favorable geological settings. But for this, uh, data integration is key. So, I would just like to acknowledge, uh, yeah, thank Nordmin and Avena Resources and, of course, my supervisors <laughs> for this. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks. Good applause.